All right, everybody, happy Saturday and happy game day, week two of the college football season. I'm your host, Simone Eli, alongside Matt Scalisi. It's the Auburn pregame show brought to you by Medical Properties Trust. And Matt, uh, a really successful week one for Auburn. They got to feel pretty confident going into week two today, taking on Alabama State kickoff at 11 o'clock at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Easier one to find today on TV for folks. I know we had a lot of comments last week about how do I watch the game? Where is it? It's on SEC Network this week. So easier one to find. And I think now some more excitement and a little more buzz going for the Auburn Tigers going into week two than than week one. I think there were some folks in kind of wait and see mode. Mm -hmm. And we waited and we saw and Auburn looked pretty good last week. Yeah, no doubt about it. Auburn, a 49, almost 50 point favorite today, which we expect. I think that the monkey is kind of off the back a little bit. You know, Brian Harson had his debut. The Auburn offense looked as good as people hoped that it would. Um, Bo Nix, 20 of 22 for 275 and three scores. Uh, they were rolling early and quick. And I think that's exactly what fans were hoping to see. They wanted to see this marriage work when it comes to new coordinators, Brian Harson, and uh, and that's what exactly what happened. Yeah, I I think people came. I I think I think the new coach was getting some benefit of the doubt from the fan base, but I think there was still some skepticism and there was hesitation, yeah. and we could sense that all off season that that people were ready to do something new, but they just weren't sure what it was going to look like under Brian Harson. And I think last week gave people, a lot of Auburn fans, some of what they've been wanting for a number of years now. It gave them diversity on offense. So it's not just watching the same sort of basic philosophy over and over again. There were a lot of different things on display. There was a, a diverse passing attack. There was running a running game that featured multiple backs. Really, three guys all had really great days at the running back position. And Bo Nix was almost perfect, a very efficient, calm, yep. collected performance from Bo Nix. So if you'd if you'd made a wish list for Auburn fans for what they wanted to see from their offense mm -hmm. for the last five years, that 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 probably ticked all the boxes. Yeah, when it comes to this being like a final tune-up, so to speak, before this week three game that so many folks have talked about, Auburn and Penn State. Uh, of course, that's next week, week three. What do you think this coaching staff is looking for the most when it comes to, you know, maybe tying things up a little bit? I, and there aren't really a ton of loose ends, so to speak. I mean, the competition hasn't been great. Auburn won 60 to 10 last week over a pretty bad Akron team. So it's not like they have this whole list of things that, okay, we need to, to clean things, they clean a hundred things up. But I'm sure in coaches' mind, they can pick things apart, look at individual positions, and want to see guys be maybe pl play a little more clean. Uh, Throughout. Yeah, good comment here from actually from Scott Odom, who says just won a clean game with no mistakes and execution. And I, I do think you mostly got that last week. Very minimal mistakes in that game. You want to see that continue this week. You want to see low penalties, which again they did a pretty good job with last week. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the tough part about this is going into Penn State next week. You're you're not going to be able to really challenge your team and see what they're made of from that standpoint before that game. Just the opponents that we've had week one and two are not going to allow for that. But yeah. one of the things you can do in games like this that, that can be an actual accomplishment that helps your team is you can really get some guys further down the depth chart, a lot of quality snaps in and develop some depth. Because one thing that can happen when you step up in the, in the challenge level to, mm -hmm. a, to a tougher team, to a, guys that are going to be hitting you harder, that are bigger and faster and stronger, is you can get your, your guys roughed up a little bit, especially early in the game when they're not ready for, for this step up in competition. And that's when depth can really come in big early in a season. Obviously, it's going to matter later in the season too. But I think when you get games like this, you have to take advantage of your opportunity to get some of your younger guys mm -hmm. into the game, get them feeling comfortable out there and, and make it so that you've got some quality depth on your roster. I think the, you brought up a fantastic point, Matt, because I was listening to Brian Harson's press conference, which Brian Harson just likes to kind of dilly dally, as I like to call it. Uh, the guy just kind of goes on and on. No, no, nothing against him. But when it comes to press conferences, it's like there's a lot of uh, – just talking about random things. But one thing he did hit on that seemed pretty significant to him was getting guys who are not starters uh, 
to want to play a significant role, not not want to play, but what to, having conversations of what can you do to contribute to this team if you are not a starter, if you're a younger guy, um, if you're a role player type of guy. And those have really been the types of conversations. You got to be you got to imagine that guys went into his office after that game saying, OK, how can I expand my role? What can I do? Um, to have a bigger role on this team moving forward and to contribute. And Brian Harson spent a significant amount of time talking about that um, in his in his kind of pregame, I guess, as you sort of speak, uh, press conference going into this week. Yeah, I, I think I think for sure you're starting to see some more buy-in because the, the type of questions you're talking about too, those things happen when guys want to be included more. They want to be more of a part of the team. Yeah. And that's going to start to snowball the more this team wins under Brian Harson, and the more they feel like everything's going well. Now, you know, is that going to sustain through if Auburn ultimately loses a game at some point? I, I've, I've always go back to in the first year of a new head coach. Yeah. Um, one, of, one of my sort of early mentors when I got into sports media said to me, the, the, the first day on the job, the first real day on the job for an SEC coach, is when he loses his first game. And that's when you really find out what kind of coach he is because can he hold the team together? Can he keep the fan base on board? Can he make everybody still believe in him when things don't go right all the time? And I, I you know, that's not going to be today for Brian Harson, but I, I am very curious how he handles something like that once it happens. I will say it helps when you've got kind of a, a lead to start with by – getting people to buy into what you're doing and seeing what it looks like when everything is going well and going according to plan. So can't have gone much better for Brian Harson right now. And I think you're starting to see the players enjoy themselves and enjoy what is happening in this program under Harson. Yeah. I think another great point, Matt, just, I think the Gus Melzahn struggled to do that uh, after a little while, you know, at Auburn, there were times where, you know, lots of times where folks wondered, okay, how much can I trust this guy? How much can I continue to believe in what things could look like down the road? All right, we talked about the offense. We want to talk quickly about uh, the defensive effort. Uh, obviously, Derek Mason taking over defensive coordinator role. I think it's always interesting to see what a new coaching staff looks like when you bring guys from all parts of the country, from different conferences uh, together, and how you want it to work. You hope that it works. You got fantastic coach in Derek Mason and what he's done in Vanderbilt, a very tough job, and comes in. And the strength of this team, granted the offense rolled, uh, was the defense as well. I mean, they looked fantastic. McLean, Moultrie led, leads team in tackles, um, just seemed very dominant on that side of the ball, the type of Auburn defense that I think fans get fired up about. Yeah, and I think this team also became known, I think, for for explosive plays under Kevin Steele and and, and actually scoring as a defense and, and mm -hmm. getting turnovers. So yeah. I think that's something that would be very helpful for them to to reestablish <laughs> under Derek Mason. Obviously, you but but that can take some time. I think everybody really has to be on the same page to mm -hmm. to become a unit that's capable of doing stuff like that. Yeah. I think this group has the talent to to play like. Maybe that that 2017 Auburn defense and and those sort of later Kevin Steele defenses that were so good at that, but I think there there is there's obviously going to be an adjustment period, learning exactly what Derek Mason likes to do in given situations, learning the defense, especially for the linebackers who we know have to have to know the defense almost as well as the coaches because they're having to make calls out on the field. So there, this is a good a good schedule, I think, to start with a new system on either side of the ball because it's it's giving these guys a couple of weeks to get acclimated with what they're doing without necessarily having to pay a price for it. And and if they are struggling to learn any of this stuff, we maybe wouldn't notice it anyway, but it certainly doesn't look like they are. I mean, they, they've played very, very clean football last week, and I'm I think we should probably expect to see more of that today, although maybe – Maybe this is the day the staff says, let's get a little more complicated. Let's open up the playbook a little bit. Yeah, we'll be interested to see how much they want to do that going into a, Penn, a good Penn State team. You know, sometimes coaches are a little more reserved early on against competition that's not as strong to really show their hand what they want to do offensively um, and on both sides of the ball, really. But uh, when it comes to keys to game, one thing I do want to know, by the way, kickoff less than two hours away now. And if, if anyone else is like me on Saturday morning, it's a little rough to get up. Okay. I remember I played college basketball <laughs> and 
morning tips, anything before like two o'clock, I would consider the morning, at least in college and still in my adult life. Sometimes I struggle, but I mean, it takes a minute to get going. So don't be surprised. Uh, you know, if guys are trying to like work out the kinks a little bit on a Saturday morning for an 11 o'clock kickoff. You know, it's kind of cool outside, at least down here in Mobile. I walked the dogs this morning. It feels pretty good outside. feels like fall. I, I assume that's what it's like on it the does. place right now. So uh, hopefully, uh, for at least Auburn's sake, the guys that kind of could get going pretty quickly with this 11 o'clock kickoff. Look, I'm, I'm not going to – if Auburn gets off to a slow start this morning, I'm not going to be critical because I know what it just looked like when I walked my dog this morning, and I was off to a slow start too. <laughs> yes, so exactly. this is not – it's tough, man. It's, it's, tough, it's tough getting up when the weather's changing. And, um, you know, I, I, think, I think that the fan energy – was mm-hmm. phenomenal last week. We heard that from everybody. Yeah. We heard the players talking about it. The recruits made a big deal about it. You know, are they, is it going to look the same this week? I don't know. Um, I'll be impressed if, if Jordan Air sounds the same this week as it did last week, but I think it's a little bit tougher to get everybody out there and fired up at 11 a.m. than, than it is for uh, an evening kick like we had a week ago. There is no question about that. Let's talk some keys to the game, goals to the game. We had a comment up there um, a little bit earlier that you brought up, Matt, about you know just wanting execution, a clean game, yeah. uh, limit mistakes. And honestly, who was that from? Scott, you brought it up. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much what we had as well. I mean, no injuries. Uh you know, ha- continue to have a significant uh, run uh, run game there because I think that that always makes things go in the SCC is to be able to run the ball. But other than that, Matt, uh, it- it's pretty clear cut like, for-, for Auburn against Alabama State today. I think so. I, I think more-, more of what we saw last week, maybe-, maybe dig down a little deeper into the roster and into the playbook today. And then one thing you you put in our in our show notes here for a key to the game that I agree with Simone make people happy when you when you're when you're trying to get folks to come out for an 11 a.m. kickoff against an FCS opponent um, you got to put on a little bit of a show you know mm-hmm. like give the give the people what they want a little bit so pull out you know I, I'm not saying you have to empty the playbook but like pull out some trick plays today do some fun stuff out there on the field. I will also say, though, in terms of entertainment value, if you are going to the game, the Alabama State marching band is playing at halftime, and that is worth the price of your ticket uh, yeah. to see them out there today. So should be a really fun time out there. I, I think that Auburn also will have some fun out there in this game and, and do some fun stuff just to, to show off a little bit. Yeah. Got a comment. Uh, ESPN Plus, the only way to watch it. It's not uh, SEC Network, 11 o'clock. So this one is actually right. on real TV. Uh, so we can actually find this one. My husband didn't realize that yesterday or last <laughs> week. And he was like texting me like, babe, I that can't. Was play tough. Game. I was like, dear, you gotta, you gotta go log into the ESPN Plus. Yeah, yeah. No, no. This one will be a lot easier for you guys to find this week. So. <laughs> It'll be on the dial, as they say. Yeah. Um, other games in the SEC, an interesting one just from an in-state perspective. Um, UAB taking on Georgia uh, last week, Georgia against Clemson, huge win for Kirby Smart and company. Uh, but UAB, man, I mean, Bill Clark, if he can get anybody fired up, he can get these guys fired up. He's got a ton of veteran guys a <laughs> year in and year yeah. out. Uh, it'll be interesting. You you say in state in state interest. I think very specifically Auburn interest. Auburn fans yeah. would love to see uh, Georgia lose to UAB, obviously. Yeah. And and look. JT Daniels is is questionable for this game. He's been banged up apparently, so we don't even know if he's going to be out there. Uh, mm-hmm. Could really create an opportunity for UAB in this game. And Simone, I'm looking down the rest of the schedule. This is a very weird schedule weird. for the SEC. South Carolina plays East Carolina. That could be a little <laughs> dicey. Tennessee is actually an underdog to Pitt um, in, yeah. in, in, in <laughs> Neyland Stadium, so that that's a weird one to keep an eye on. Texas A&M is traveling to Colorado. Texas is is playing at Arkansas, so a little future SEC uh, rivalry there. Um, a yeah. little preview for that. So, like, I, I don't, I wouldn't say any like hugely consequential games, but a lot of really just weird ones. Yeah, definitely weird. It's like the trap week. I, you know, we called that when I played college basketball. It's like one of those weeks where you know nobody's playing in conference yet. Uh, you know, you want to have this final tune up. You want to look good. You know, this is not only for Alabama, for Auburn, people in state, but throughout the entire SEC. And if you're like me when it comes to watching college football and you're watching a game like at Alabama State against Auburn, and if things get boring, you can always click over to number 12, Oregon, and third ranked Ohio State. The game kicks off also at 11 o'clock. So that'll be interesting. I like to always go back and forth. Uh, my husband 
drives me crazy, but I do it. So pretty, pretty big one, especially after the Pac-12 had a really, really bad start last week outside of UCLA. Yeah, and I, I, you know, that I think that would this would be a big opportunity for for Oregon and UCLA, both of them yeah. at this point, to sort of uh, keep themselves in the playoff discussion and and make that that conference relevant, which they have not been in a couple of years now. Scott's right. Multiple TVs going. That's the best <laughs> way to have it. That is the That's best right. way to do college football Saturdays. Week two of the college football season. Uh, we're less than two hours away from kickoff on the Plains. Auburn hosting Alabama State. Uh, they're about a 50-point favorite in the game as expected. Um, look for things just to be clean, Matt, uh, just like we talked about. Uh, another big day probably from Auburn on both sides of the ball. But for Matt Scalisi, I'm Simone Eli. I uh, want to thank our sponsor, Medical Properties Trust. Again, this is the Auburn pregame show, and we'll see you all after the game. Medical Properties Trust, at the very heart of